Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I am Darren Carlo. I think a number of you were in with us uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. This is Katie Gaston. My name is Katie Gaston. Thank you for joining. Yeah. And uh, excited about our what we have to show you today. You know, we call it Client Wrangling 101. And We, uh, as you know, if, if you saw some of my talks yesterday, I come from the agency side. Uh, so today I'll have some uh, anecdotes and stories of clients that I've dealt with in the past uh, and personality types that I know you're probably dealing with on a regular basis. And uh, hopefully those are fun and, and things you can relate to. And then <clears throat> we'll talk about the, the core aspects of those personalities and ways that we can address them with social bridge. Um, and, and create environments that cater to and, and help you be more effective with your agency work and, and at the same time mitigating some of those difficult personalities. Um, and maybe some of it's too extremes. Not everyone's always this difficult, but uh, you do see some of these aspects come out in, in many clients at, at various times. So with that, and it's a little dark, but the, it's our, our friend Anthony Soprano. And uh, when this client calls, oftentimes you're you're looking to hide somewhere uh, under the desk. Looks really good right about now. For me, this was John. Uh, it's not really John. Uh, for privacy purposes, thank you Google Images. But uh, John worked for a nonprofit, uh, so we all thought at the beginning of the engagement that uh, we'd be working with great altruistic people and we'd be doing something good for the community, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But John really liked to yell um, a lot. So he wasn't, he wasn't the saint we, we had expected and, and that we saw in kind of our, our early on pitching process and, and in the beginning of that uh, relationship. John's favorite thing to do, we just had a discussion about the 405, was to, and if you know anything about LA traffic, this will make sense, schedule Friday afternoon meetings at their Mid Wilshire headquarters. Traffic looks a little something like that, uh, so you can plan on getting home by 8 or 9. These were meetings for things that could have been handled over the phone very easily as well, so it was, it was a bit sadistic. So eventually we, <laughs> we resigned that account after two years, I think. Yeah. So John was a bully. Uh, and, and the bully, for whatever reason, really likes to impose their will uh, upon you guys, and especially your staff. Uh, and it can, it can cause a lot of heartache and, and hair pulling. Uh, and oftentimes, with them imposing their will, uh, the characteristics of a project, of a campaign, of a relationship, begin to take on their characteristics, their behavior. Uh, so if they're always rushed, if they're disorganized, uh, this starts to bleed over into the work and into the, you know, the account side of things and, and that relationship. So you, you have to really create a strong structure, and, and part of that is, is really detailed reporting, uh, having strong lists of comments of what your expectations are, uh, and, and creating that structure. You can create that within the system in, in a variety of ways, and it gives you something to, to have a foundation and to lean back on when their behavior is, is coming into play, and you can say, no, th this is the, the structure of this engagement, and, and it gives your, your people something to remind them of. There's also the micromanager that fits into this uh, in-therapy group. Um, so we'll, we'll be breaking clients into these various groups, and this is our therapeutic clients. Uh, you didn't realize when, when you won this account that you were bringing on another art director, but that's what you got. Uh, they love to play art director, sit over, you know, virtually sit over your creatives. Uh, at times, we've had clients that were valuable clients and they'd be in for client meetings, uh, maybe on a quarterly basis. And they like to talk to the designers and before you do it, they were actually art directing a, a project we were currently working on. Uh, so that, that was definitely a problem. You can really create buffers uh, within the system. And, and that's something we, we recommend because it, it's good to have that client involvement they can also be stifling for your creatives, as I'm sure you've seen in, in past engagements. And, and using those different levels and tiers uh, of privacy and, and how you wrap things can be invaluable for keeping 
a healthy amount of separation, but still having the channels for input. Then we'll move on to our, our Royal Pains, uh, a favorite of mine. My, my wife has introduced me to this, unfortunately. <laughs> so we have Michelle. Um, we came to affectionately calling Michelle the White Rabbit. She was always focused on time. And uh, we really had to try to counteract that tunnel vision of hers. Um, and you'll see in a second what, what this persona is like, but it, it really is singularly focused at times on that aspect. Uh, she also thought there was an easy button for Photoshop. Uh, why can't you just do that quickly? Uh, or a magic paintbrush. Uh, things like retouching and, and creating the things that you guys create on a daily basis are intricate and complex. Uh, and not easy to understand uh, everything that goes into making that look real and look and look good. So that can be tough to explain sometimes to somebody that's not native to these processes, these technologies. So we, we worked very hard to get her to see the big picture and eventually come to a mutual understanding that like wine and whiskey, some things just require a certain amount of time to be really good. Michelle, in this case, was a woman, but we call this personality Father Time. Um, they're always seeing your work through that lens at, at different periods. Um, and it, it's very important to broaden them out. Uh, another thing here is the hours idea. You know, why is that taking so long? So a great way is to help visualize how long things take and what changes, uh, what implications changes can have. I love Gantt charts for this because it, it allows you to create that, that visual map of a project, of a campaign, uh, and with dependencies in place and being able to shift things on the fly, you can say, well, you just had us go back and redo all this work and look at what it did to all of our deadlines that were three weeks from now. They're now four and a half weeks away. Uh, and I think that's, that's a valuable tool for people that are always kind of looking at time but always kind of uh, tweaking things. Uh, they can be counterproductive, and I think it's, it's helpful to remind them of that. And then there's our friend, the arsonist, with the, the weekly fire drill. Uh, these were always fun. They can be unavoidable, and there, there's not a great method for organizing somebody else's, you know, the way they come to you with projects. Uh, what you can do, though, because often these projects evolve in real time, uh, you have scope creep. It's great to centralize all of the information around that. Get your comments, get everything threaded and centralized for, for two very important reasons. One, to make sure you do the job right. Uh, if things are splintering off and the latest change from the client is in email, but the comment thread is out of date and, and they're not following that structure, uh, you can end up with the wrong product at the end of the day and you don't have time for that kind of a mistake when it, when it is really that, that fire drill type of a project. So keeping things centralized is important. And that document, that document trail is also critical in the post-mortem because a lot of times you don't have the time you want to really scope it out and to talk about what are we going to do here, what, what are all our metrics for success, how many revisions are we going to include on this. You know you just need to get it done. Uh, and after the fact, you, you have that now to go back and say, look, you came to us with a problem, we solved it, but you also you know, had us make seven revisions. Here's each one of them. And, and that kind of uh, documentation can be very helpful to you after the project is finished. Teeth pulling. Uh, in this case, uh, the phone's not ringing. You're actually calling them and calling and calling and calling. Where are they? This is Victor. Uh, we had a lot of good times together. Victor could be great. He could be all over the place, sending emails, sending jokes, approving estimates, providing feedback on creative. Uh, those were the good times. And then Victor could be missing in person. Um, and there was never any predicting why or when. So we would often, from all levels of the agency, hound, hound Victor and, and his staff to get an answer. And uh, sometimes that would work. Other times, we just had to wait. We had a, a pending deadline, and he would you know, vanish out of thin air. Sorry, I had to take my kids to soccer practice. Uh, I know that I imposed this deadline. And he'd give us an answer right at the, uh, the stroke of 12. 
And then, of course, there were the deadlines we missed after the stroke of 12. Victor was what we like to term a ghost. Um, and, and the thing you hear is a lot of times they are as busy as they seem. Uh, and, and you can't mitigate too much of that. But what you can do is provide in, in really digestible chunks <coughs> using things, create a system of digests or regular intervals for them to be checking in and, and, and receiving the status and information of a project. Uh, they, may, they may not be reading that. They very well might not. But when they do resurface, it also gives you that foundation to say, okay, I'm back. We need to get the decision. Where are we? If you get that question, you can say, well, just pull up the latest digest. That's the latest. That's where we are. And there's less catching up to do. Uh, so you can really move on to the work you need to get done, especially because they probably ate up 90% of the time you would have liked to have had. Uh, and catching them up is, is not going to be helpful. Then we have the waffler. Um, they're, they're not comfortable with the visual medium. That's, that's part of the reason why they've come to you, um, to help them create and, and express things in a visual sense. But then they can also really want to see everything. And so you get these, I want to see comparisons. I want to, what does that look like blue? What if we move this over there? Uh, it could be very much like the micromanager in how they're, they're over the shoulder of your creatives. So things like, uh, review and approve and being able to show side by side and, and really compare and contrast, but also establish some structure so that you can say here are some examples and, and give them that comparative experience, but don't let them drive that. Uh, that can be very important. So these are, these are kind of our three difficult categories. Uh, it wouldn't be fair to term all clients as difficult. They're not. We have our soulmates. Um, <laughs> And here, no phone call is unwelcome. We're probably even Facebook friends with them. We've been on a few client outings with uh, inappropriate things happening. <laughs> you, get, you get the sense. This is Stephanie. Um, sometimes, you know, you just really, you get each other. Uh, but you need to make sure you don't get each other too much. Uh, you can't have too much of a good thing. <laughs> if you find that clients outings are, are ending with a long-lasting embrace, um, that's, that's not always a good thing. You need to pump the brakes a little. <laughs> because uh, I've seen on, on too many occasions these client agency type relationships which come out of a good chemistry and, and that's great for working and, and it's very productive. You just have to manage it um, because they're, they're usually a dead end and they can, they can affect the work and the account. So the chemistry is great, but always just be mindful of that when you have that great chemistry that this is a working relationship. So uh, Stephanie would be a soulmate. They're, uh, they're a true partner. You have your ups and downs, but ultimately you get each other. Uh, the thing to, to realize here is that you're not going to always agree but this is the kind of client that you can really partner with and, and have an open, frank discussion. Uh, we recommend things like discussions and, and really bringing ideas to them. They'll bring ideas to you. Uh, Social Bridge is a great place for that, that open forum. And we recommend stoking that, you know. Get them in the system and get them with ideas. Even if, if that's their only interaction in the system, that's a great way to, to bring them in and, and give a central place for that kind of conversation. And finally, the unicorn. These don't really exist. Uh, all your budgets are approved. All your creative decisions are, are given the go-ahead. Um, but if they do, you, you want to keep the gravy train coming. The thing to think with both of these is that uh, great clients are, are oftentimes easy to work with, but complacency as much as any mistake uh, can really start to sour a relationship. Like that. So, again, even if, if you don't have to build the structure to manage them, it's great to use the system to remind them of what's going on. Uh, have a, a workspace with new speeds and, and ideas where you're bringing innovative thought, and it, it just gives them and shows them that you're consistently thinking about their business and uh, a place that they can come and, and see that. So those uh, those are our four categories. No client is, is an island. You'll get bits and pieces of all of these clients at times in, in single personas or in single people. 
the thing to think about is who these clients are. Think about how they really like to work with you guys, work with uh, people in their own organization, and what their communication style is like. Uh, you know, I think Carl's Carl's speech was really great. Really thinking about how people communicate, how people work, and and have an understanding of that. And when you have that understanding, you can then come to the tool, to a tool, but in this case, Social Bridge or, or in any number of tools. And with the understanding of what their style is, you can apply the tool. Um, and I think that's very important. And that's what we'll, we'll get into in these next slides with Katie, is how with your understanding of this client and the persona, how you can kind of tailor Social Bridge to effectively uh, deal with, mitigate, and improve these client relationships and your work with them. Thank you, guys. So before I jump into change management, I have some questions for you guys. First, did any of the current profiles that you saw there, did, did it ring a bell of a client that you've worked with in the past? Or a little bit of a bell? And then my second question is, how often have you tried to change any of the things that you've worked with as a client? Have you tried to introduce new styles of communication? And has that been a painful experience? Because that's what we find from sometimes in the things I do in Central Desktop. Um, I've moved into a new role now, but I've done implementation for about a year now to Central Desktop. And some of the things that we talk about a lot in implementation is how to create a system, not only create the technology to support how to work within Social Bridge, but also go through the process of convincing your team and in the agency instances, convincing your clients to work in a new way. So what we'll talk a little bit about now is some theories behind change management and some successful ways you can create change to convince your clients of something that they might not necessarily be comfortable with at first, and then some ways to structure the system to actually, as our um, session is titled, wrangle your clients to working a little bit better in the future. So first, what is change management? I think you can read the quote for yourself, but I think that the key to change management for me is transition. It's the point that you can work one way in a certain instance, but you transition and mold into a new way, going into the future. So it's understanding some of the problems that you might have experienced previously, and slowly, not at the click of a button, <laughs> moving to a new way of working together with your client. One theory that I wanted to introduce today, and this is, as you can read on the screen, one of the initial theories of change management started by Kurt Lewis over 60 years ago. So change management, I mean, you can, from social psychology, you can study it, study it in social psychology, and there's also within IT, a lot of study or academic theory around change management, just for the IT perspective. The foundation of change management, or the foundation of the theory of change, was Kurt Lewis back in 1950. And what his theory stated was that there's three different types of change, three different processes by which one person, you can encourage someone to go from a place where they don't want to be to the place where you want them to be. The first step with that would be to untreat the change. So the idea behind this is that you work with your client to help them to get to a point where they feel comfortable to transition from an old way of working into a new way of working. Um, and within this process, one of the things Kurt Lewis recommended is to think about this thing called a force field analysis. So what the idea behind a force field analysis is, is to be able to understand <coughs> what are the driving forces towards change and what are the things that are holding someone away from change. So the, in the instance of working with clients, it might be the obviously the desired change is to work together within social bridge. You want to communicate in a new way with your clients. Some of the driving forces you might see is that, well, we can communicate a lot better in this new system. You can work, let's say, on the road, you know, uh, mobile, like, which we might not have been able to do before because we had to have you come in the office and review approved in, in the office. Um, you know, you can communicate and collaborate on things all in one centralized location rather than having to search for your email in lots of different places. So you might understand the driving forces of the change, but that's not the tough thing here. You have to convince your client of those driving forces as well. Now the second part of that is that you have to also understand the restraining forces of change. So understanding what might prevent your client from actually wanting to get into the system. Where are the scared things for the client for this change? And part of the restraining forces is thinking about what Darren was talking about with their profiles. Obviously, I'm going to guess the restraining forces for the unicorn probably won't be as strong as maybe the micromanager or the bully. So being able to think for the personalities of your clients, how can I strategically introduce this change to where they really want to work together in this new system with me? 
after you're able to convince them to change, <laughs> or really prepare them at least for it, the next stage is the actual change itself. And this is the transition. So in, in Kurt uh, Lewis's uh, theory, the idea is that first we would work together to introduce the change slowly, make sure that everyone knows about it. Another point in, this, in the actual theory is to make sure that the leadership team in an organization is really supportive of it. So one of the things that we find in implementation is that if you have executive sponsorship, it's one of the key elements. So if your team, if your leadership team and your company is on board, then that's definitely helpful to convince your client to get into the system as well. Um, and then finally, after you've introduced the change, transition slowly, add some leadership sponsoring, and then transition and slowly introduce the change, then you can actually move towards it and start to begin to go to the next area, which is the free the change. So one of the things that has actually changed since this theory was introduced over 60 years ago is that freeze isn't necessarily stopping change. It's more of a milkshake. That's, that's the term that they use today when they talk about this theory. Is it's more of a, a process where it's more towards a solid state. So people like consistency. People like repeatability. But at the same time, I and mean, we're in IT, we know things change consistently. So there's always going to be a process of taking a look at your social bridge system and saying, where are the things that we need to adapt and continue to grow for the processes you might have set up in the initial implementation that aren't working for either this client or long term as well. So the idea of freeze is moving more towards a consistent state, but also being adaptable enough to where you can work with your client, like a milkshake, <laughs> to consistently um, develop and build your system to a place where they want to be with you. So I know that that sounds like a lot of things to do, so I'll go ahead and introduce some theories and some additional techniques you can use for each of these different types of stages for the clients that we introduce. The first one is if you're working in the unfreeze, and let's say you have a client that you know is in therapy. I mean, not technically, but they might be a bully, they might be a micromanager, and gosh, they are a tough client to work with. One of the things that you can do is what we have here on the right side of the screen is planning. So rather than just developing the system and saying, yeah, I'd like to use this, work with, with them to plan the system. Give them a voice. Ask them, you know, in the things that we've worked with together, what might not have worked when we were trying to plan our projects? And then when they give you that feedback, actually ask them, how do you want this system that we're working together to be developed? Um, micromanagers and bullies like voices. They like to be heard. So if you work with them in the planning cycle, then you'll likely have more buy-in when you actually go to the process of, of the actual change and introducing the change with them. The second would be if you're actually changing the system. This one would be most effective for our teeth pullers. So that's going to be the waffler um, or the ghost. Those are the people that you know you have to bring back into the system consistently. Uh, they might be at the beginning of the project, but they're nowhere to be found until you're at the very end looking for a, a buy-in at the deadline. So the first step theory. So the first steps technique is really introducing the change in a small series of steps. So perhaps with these clients, maybe what you do is uh, they like to have an understanding on a monthly basis what's happening with all the projects you're working with. So maybe what you start with is you say, okay, so we will, for the first two weeks we're working together, I'm going to send you a report of all the projects that we're working with, but I'm going to generate that report through Social Bridge rather than generating it through the way we used to. And then maybe week three through four, okay, so you might do a, a task report. So they want to know what tasks they have to do or what things that you expect them to do for the next you know, four projects that you're working on. So rather than doing that in the way you used to, maybe week three through four, as you roll this out to them, you say, okay, so now I'm not only going to send you that project status report, but I'm also going to send you a task list that lets you know what tasks you have to do. So it's slowly transitioning the change. You know, maybe week five through six, you start transitioning and say, okay, so now let's work together to not do email, but actually let's move that into discussion. So you're slowly moving what they've done <laughs> and moving it into Social Bridge. And as you get more advanced, you start to introduce more advanced features like review and approve or like uploading files slowly so they feel comfortable with it and they actually realize that that's an easier way to work rather than trying to do it in the way that you always consistently. And then finally, we have in the freeze, evidence stream. So the idea behind evidence stream, this is going to be most effective for your royal pains. Um, you know, they're, they're definitely the ones that aren't as easy to work with sometimes. Evidence stream is, is consistently bringing up the change that you've made. So it, it, this is very similar to if you had marketing campaigns. 
and you, let's say, sent one email, and then you sent another email, and then you introduced it on a, a billboard, and then you did you know, a TV advertising about it, it's consistently bringing up the message time and time again. So maybe the first place you do is you might do a training with the team, so a, a webinar training. And then maybe the next week or the next two weeks, you introduce what's called a sandbox or a test environment, and you encourage them to go in and play in the system. So it's, it's continuously bringing the change up again and again. And then in the status meetings that you have with them on a weekly basis, you might say, you know, I think that it might be a good time for us to go check that, this out in Social Bridge. So you consistently say it again. And then perhaps you even say it in an email. Well, why don't you just upload that file in Social Bridge? So the more you bring it up in different mediums, the more effective it is to convince them that, oh, this is a system that we might actually try to work with. Um, and the way that I would recommend, once you know you've hit that freeze stage with your clients, is when they say, okay, I'm going to go to Social Bridge to find that. When that becomes common terminology, that's how, especially in implementation, we know, okay, so this is, this is good, this is adoption. Once that becomes a phrase that you hear time and time again. And with that, so we've introduced some theories, we've introduced some techniques. Let's go ahead and talk about some ways that you can actually use system features to work with these types of clients. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll return to our slides here just as a, a bit of a reminder. Mm -hmm. And with our, our in therapy clients, our boys, our micromanagers, um, and you can just bring up the points. Yeah, of course. Thank you. It's important to strike the right balance. Uh, you don't, again, you, understanding that personality, uh, you don't want to become an annoyance. You don't want to be pushing too much uh, information and in kind of a fire hose of reports and status. So determining the right flow is important and, and strike that balance of both contact and information. And you can really moderate and, and kind of tailor that within the system. Again, detailed records are key, both to diffusing disagreements, uh, post-mortem, I didn't ask for that. That's, that's not how I said it. Well, if it's in black and white, it's a lot easier for your team to say, well, it is, we can work around that. It doesn't have to become an argument, but it, it gives you a, a very strong position uh, as well as for scope creep, um, you know, having that, that trail to look back upon, especially when, when things are fast moving and, and evolving in real time, can be helpful because oftentimes you, you actually don't realize how much went into something and it's easy to overlook and forget things. And then again, insulating your creatives from overbearing personalities or opinions uh, that it can affect them. Creatives can be Maybe not overly sensitive, but easily affected by hearing what the client had to say in, a, in an unfiltered manner. Uh, so really finding ways to insulate. I think the input from directly from the client can be invaluable. It's great for creatives sometimes to hear from the horse's mouth and maybe not through a, a system of filters. But at the same time, uh, you do have to moderate that and, and find the appropriate way to deliver that, that message to your creatives. So what we're going to go ahead and review in each of these, this section based upon our client profiles is we actually created client extranets. And we highlighted some different features and some different application blocks that you can use in each of these extranets based on the profiles of the client. So first, we're going to say these are our Toro Toro. So these are going to be our, our in-therapy clients, the bulls, maybe the micromanagers and the bullies a little bit. Um, and you can see what this particular profile or this particular extranet is like is this is if you wanted to manage multiple projects in one central location and workspace and invite your clients into the process of managing this project together, or multiple projects together. So some of the things that you consider using when you're working with micromanagers or bullies uh, is, first of all, this is one of my favorite application blocks, particularly with project management, and this is called the project status report, or project status application block. The nice thing about it is that you can have a lot of different types of features that you can choose when you're customizing this block. So for example, what I'm showing here is that I'm only showing incomplete milestones, um, and I'm not even showing the incomplete tasks here, because what that gives me the ability to do is at least show my clients, these are the projects that we're working on. For each of these portions of the project, this is how much has been completed on each of these, but I don't give them the ability to meddle in all the little details Rather, I keep it at a very high level and at least let them see what's going on and prevent them from really diving too deep so too many questions aren't asked um, throughout. Um, gives them some level of control so they're not consistently calling you on the phone asking what's going on. Next, this one is actually fairly helpful for the micromanager. 
So one of the things micromanager wants to know is, gosh, what's happening at all times? <laughs> and how can I consistently manage my team towards it? Well, our recent activity feed lets you know exactly what's happening at all times um, throughout the workspace. So not only, this gives the, the micromanager the ability to see every single day what's been happening so they can see what's going on with the status of their projects. And the other nice thing that I would recommend about this is also consider the email digest. So if you're able to, if your system or if your client doesn't like to log into the system too often, then go ahead and set up an email digest for them so they can still work in their email, but they get this recent activity feed so they know what's going on with their project. And they don't have to worry or call you <laughs> consistently to ask what's going on. Another nice one, and I use this quite a bit actually when I'm working with, with different clients um, in some workspaces, is the idea to create a custom tab but actually label it as internal use only. So the nice thing about a custom tab is you can link a custom tab to a specific folder. So in this instance, what I've done is I've created an internal notes folder. I've linked my internal notes custom tab to that folder, but I've created it only for my use. So if your team still wants to give your clients the ability to see what's going on in your workspace, but you also want a personal place where you can have team discussions and not make that visible to the client, you still want to do it within the context of one workspace rather than creating another one, the internal notes, uh, Creating a custom tab called internal notes is one way that you can achieve that. And then finally, this is also one of the very nice things that I like about our review and approve is the ability to summarize notes for a particular brief, a brief, or I mean, excuse me, a particular piece of creative over a period of time. So, for example, I could say for this entire piece of creative, everything that's happened on this creative. When I'm in a, a, man, a meeting, let's say, with my bully, and they want to know, well, how, why was this change made? How was this made? You can show them the notes from your, either your internal team or your creative, and let them actually see the history of the proof over a period of time, actually while you're in a meeting with them. That's great. So as we go back to our, the honey boo boos of the world, um, <laughs> it's really, Important of, of any account, uh, and this is the first thing you learn as, as an effective account you know, services professional to set those expectations, and, and you can really do that within within Social Bridge as well, and, and creating that that structure for how uh, you will work together and, and leverage the system, and again leveraging tools that show deviation and and the effects of how working together and different changes really do affect and, and impact a project. Uh, Real-time scope creep is inevitable. So again, centralizing commentary allows you to both make sure you're, you're getting all of the comments and implementing them, doing the job right in a, in a short, compressed amount of time, and giving you that, that log of changes and everything that's happened on the job to review and kind of level set when, when the, the fire is put out. Detailed records, uh, talking about the post-mortem, critical. And it gives your, your people confidence that we're running around with our, our hair on fire. We're, we're making sure that this gets out by Thursday at 5 p.m. Uh, but we know that when we're done, because we're, we're working it through the system, we'll have the information, we'll have the, the history, uh, and we don't have to worry about that aspect of it. We can just make sure we get this, this project out on time. <coughs> so we'll look at how, how you can see that in, in an actual workspace. Yeah. So once again, this is another client portal. Um, the idea is let's manage multiple projects in one central location, give our clients access to it so they can see kind of what's going on for the projects we're working with them. One thing that you can do here on the side, and this is just using a left navigation bar here, is actually set up some specific links um, to, so your client has access to do things that they would typically do maybe over the phone or over the email on a consistent basis. So maybe your clients, uh, particularly the father time one, might want to actually know how much time has been spent on a particular project. Well, there's ways that you can actually set up a, a report, maybe through, let's say, a database and using some workflow roles, where they can request information on that, and then you could email that to them as well. Uh, same thing with a project update, if they just wanted a project update. Set up some ways where your client has one central place to request that information, so you don't have to wait for a phone call or an email or a text message if you get to that point about you know, some of the information that your clients might need to know. Um, another one, I, Darren talked a lot about scope creep, and I think that this is one of the things that the Royal 
pains that you would really have to be concerned with, whether that's the father time or the arsonist. There's, there's consistently chances where the projects can either grow or for the father time, consistently chances where you want to keep them contained <laughs> and make sure that you know the project is either under budget or at least on budget because they want to make sure that the time spent is appropriate. So with the project contract, have it on your, your homepage where you can actually you know, maybe through a database you track some of the contracts that you initially signed in. And you can have it just as an application block there. So immediately for the project that they're working on, they can go to one central location and actually find the contract that you've put into the system. Brief, contract, whatever the terminology you want to use that. Another one here, uh, and this is particularly for the arsonist, is the arsonist might wait till the last moment on a project and say, oh wait, I forgot something, let's do that too. <laughs> So what you don't want to do is you don't want to make your contact information not visible for them. You want to give them the ability to be able to say, oh yeah, I can contact you immediately when I'm thinking of that idea that I want to do in the middle of the project and let me not wait till the last minute before our deadline ends. So this people block, and you'll actually see this throughout the multiple different profiles I'll review. So take a look at some of the different ways that this will be set up. But this people block gives you the ability to have everyone's contact information directly on the home page. You can scroll over someone's name and see some additional contact information. Or the other nice thing that I like about this one is that if you look on the right hand side, you'll see that little calendar icon. That gives me the ability to actually click on one of these team members' calendars. As long as you're managing your calendars through um, Social Bridge, you can click on someone's calendar and see their availability. So you can judge if they're in a meeting when you're trying to call them or not. You know, the ability to have the visibility transparency so your clients can contact you at the appropriate time. And then finally, this is an email digest. Um, so you can always send out email digests to these clients to let them know the details, as, as Darren was saying, throughout the course of the project, what's been happening, when activities been happening, have that detailed trail of things that, that are happening so you know exactly um, if information is missed or not. Great. And uh, so with our, our team pullers, the people that you have to really track down, uh, maintain a steady stream. You can, again, create based on your, your interaction and, and their persona and what you know of them, uh, the right amount of stream and contact and touch points. Um, but you can really make, maintain that stream and make sure it's there so that when they are ready uh, and make it digestible as well, they can quickly and easily get up to speed and, and resume project if, uh, if they've been MIA for some time. The balance of comparative options, again, for our, our wafflers, very powerful and, and a great way to really mitigate that, that inherent risk of uh, over overshowing and overproducing on a piece of creative. And then impose structure. Uh, use their schedules for input and meetings and, and really lean on the, on the system to set up that structure through calendaring and, and setting up these meetings uh, so that you don't have to pull them in. That you can get on their calendar, you can get into their, their work day and, uh, and hopefully mitigate some of that missing in action and the, the negatives that, that result from that. Once again, we've got our teeth pullers, as you can see up at the top there. Um, and the teeth pullers workspace is all about making information visible in the home page. So you don't have to go searching for them on the phone and email and hounding them to get back to you when you really need their feedback. Uh, so some of the things that you can see, this is another people application block um, and a different way that you can structure it. Uh, some of the things that I like about this one is if you end up using instant messaging software in your agency or if that's something that you've thought about doing before, we actually have instant messaging recognition software. So for example, here in, in uh, Central Desktop, um, I can see when any of my team members are online I can see that little Yahoo, Yahoo uh, icon light up. But the nice thing is that if you did want to use that, maybe that Skype or Yahoo or another chat that we support through our, our software, um, your clients can actually see when you're online and if you'd be okay with them IMing you, they could also get in touch with you that way. In addition, another nice thing about this is that this is actually an email chat box. So if your clients would want to participate or email you, if they're one of the people that don't like discussions but you know are more comfortable with email, they can check one of these boxes, click email, and automatically, through your default provider, an email will pop up with all of the names that they checked there. Uh, so it's a really nice block. Uh, there's a lot of different features and functionalities with people that I always recommend uh, try to check out. Next one is task lists. So 
once again, with these teeth pullers, we want to get them, we want to let them know what we expect from them at what time. So as soon as they log into the workspace, that's all they have to do is just finish the tasks and then you know they can get on their merry way because they're busy people. So this task list, you can set this up to where you can show just the tasks that your client has to do and filter them directly to the home page. Once again, once the teeth pullers go there, they know exactly what's expected and then they can go and continue on their daily work. Recent proofs, this is another way that you could set up something so you could show just the proofs that have been uploaded. And another thing that you'll probably have with compliance a lot is you just need their feedback on proofs. So here on the home page, you could set up um, how to show just recent proofs that have been uploaded that you, you're needing their feedback on. In addition, another thing to point clients to here if you haven't experienced it is on the My Dashboard directory, and you have, actually have a My Proofs section as well. The My Proofs also lets you see any proofs that require your feedback. So I would say if you don't want to consider setting it up in your client workspace, you can also go to the My Dashboard dropdown and see the My Proofs there as well. And then finally, this is particularly nice for the WAF alert. So this is a feature within our review and approve that lets you compare two versions of a proof side by side. The nice thing about this is the WAF alert is going to be the individual who can't always make up their minds. You know, they don't always want blue or green on one car in one advertisement. So the nice thing about this is you can say, well, this is what we did previously. This is, you know, what's new. Um, and by having that comparison there, you can steer them towards the direction so they can make up their mind and you can move forward with the actual job that you need to finish. And then lastly, our, our soulmates, they're easy to work with, uh, but there are, are still great ways that we, we see the, the application and social bridge helping uh, just to continue that relationship. And. Um, and that's encouraging those collaborative discussions. Again, stoke, stoke that back and forth. Really involve them and, and create a mutual relationship. Uh, even if it's just around ideas, it doesn't have to be uh, super deep, but it, it does keep them engaged and keeps uh, them thinking that you care about their business and, and you're continuing to put forth ideas. And that, that really means the world to a lot of clients. And use status updates. Uh, there's, there's lots of low-touch automated features that can allow you to kind of keep in touch, avoid the feeling of complacency, uh, so that they, even if you're not reaching out every day, they can see that there's activity on their account. They can see that things are happening, uh, even if it's not necessarily noticeable. It's not the ad being done every day uh, if you don't have that kind of a cycle. But at least they can see that tasks are happening, things are being uploaded. And it shows them that you are working, you, are, you do care about their account, and, and they are valuable to you. Definitely. So with that, this is going to be our, our last pull row file or extra net that we'll highlight. Some of the things that you can think about doing here is, once again, using the left side navigation. I'm going to go ahead and, and change some different features that are, or links that I wanted to include here. So in the previous one, I, I wanted status updates, I wanted status reports. And this one, I just want to give these clients the ability to actually do that on their own. So you can set up a way where, you know, if you're managing projects, project requests through something like a database, you can set up a way where you can actually link, let's say, specific views of that database directly here on the home page. So you can give your client the ability to find a project that they, they wanted to some feedback on or see what was happening on, or see what projects have been recently requested in the workspace, or even sort the project by status or any archived projects that had happened. And that's fairly easy to set up within the database structure. The nice thing is that by including a hyperlink on the front page, you're giving your clients really quick, immediate access to find some things that they might be interested in finding. And with these particular clients, with our soulmates, by, by giving them access, because you know you have a good working relationship, you trust that they just want to find out information, that'll give them time to, to not worry so much about the project and give them time to build stronger relationships with you, which is what our soulmates really care about which is what this other people application block is. So this is the third one that I'm going to highlight. This is the one that I end up using quite a bit because I, I like to see people's pictures. So um, The nice thing about this, though, is that if I hover over any one of these photos, I can actually see detailed information about that person as well. So I can see their name, their job title, where they work, let's say, if you're working, obviously, with external partners, um, and also be able to click into their calendar, their phone number, things like that. The nice thing is it looks really clean. It's a, it's a good block. Um, and you can also click more into and see a full listing of everyone in this workspace. And then finally, discussions. Discussions is one that we'll, I would recommend using quite a bit with the soulmates um, because they like to discuss things 
Uh, you know, there's different ways that you can set up a discussion block. This one is fairly nice because it gives you the individual's image right next to the actual block itself, and you can see some information that's happening here. So, just in wrapping up, uh, you know, I think there's a, there's a great theme from today. Uh, and it really revolves around understanding your clients, thinking about them in, in, a, in a critical light, not, not negative critical, but really analyzing and, and trying to understand how they work, how they want to be communicated with, uh, and how, how best that, that can work for your agency, your staff. And that, that understanding will lead you to the right ways uh, to interface with them through Social Bridge. And we think that the principles like what Carl talked about uh, are, are great to do and, and great exercises and, and that kind of exercise can really uh, lead to you getting much more value out of this and your clients getting more value out of Social Bridge uh, by creating a better overall interaction and relationship. Completely. And think about when you introduce Social Bridge to your clients. Um, you know, it's good, it's always good, we always recommend have a training session. Training is key to make sure that your clients you know, feel comfortable in the system. But also think about some change management things. You know, Think about the different profiles of clients. Are you going to struggle getting one client into the system more than the other, and you know that just from your experience working with them? And if so, what are some things you can do to mediate that in advance of rolling it out, a training out? Maybe, maybe you change the training structure that you do with one client, and you change it a little bit different with, differently with the other one based on some of those change management things that we talked about. Um, maybe you even introduce the idea a little bit differently. So perhaps with one client you send an email, and perhaps another one you actually schedule an in-person meeting and take a different strategy because you know that you want this to be successful. You want to work with your clients in the new system, but it, it does take a little bit of modification depending on how your clients work with you. Um, and then finally, I'd say take a look at the system. Um, it's great, especially when you're starting out in the system, and this is one of the things we'll do a lot in implementation, is build templates and work with our clients to build templates, you know, repeatability in the system. But also think about what are some different things that I can do in the system because it's so customizable to make sure that I adjust based upon the profile of clients that I'm working with. Maybe that's as simple as changing a people block and maybe that's as simple as changing the outlay of a particular workspace to make it more effective just for that client. Um, so the, the third thing I'd say is explore, have a little bit of fun in the system and think about not only how to, I think, create change but also, as I said, when then the change management point, make a milkshake. So also continue to work with your clients to make it a more effective tool as you continue to build a, a relationship with them within Social Bridge and not necessarily in, in the previous way that you used to communicate. And with that, that pretty much concludes our session. So is there any questions that we can take? Yeah? Um, the different layouts that you were mm -hmm. showing, was that just on the workspace homepage or was that like a wiki page or what's the best way to lay that out? Yeah, of course. So that one, those ones that we were showing were set up as wiki pages, and the reason that they were set up that way is because I believe they um, did use the left sidebar navigation. So from a technical standpoint, if you set it up as a wiki page, you can either use the left side or the right sidebar navigation. Um, another option that you have, though, is if you do use tables, you can also set up tables with left side and right sidebar navigation. And I'm sure I can also talk with you a little bit more about the, the technical background of how to set that up after the session. You can set you tables up in the wiki pages. Mm -hmm. You can set it up in the wiki pages or in the home page as well. Yeah, yeah of course. Great. That's good. Well, thank you everyone for joining. We appreciate it. We have, we have time.
will email somebody else on the team about the project. So now there's communication outside of the central desktop that yeah. nobody knows about. Mm -hmm. um, and then we try and get them back into the system. It's just, it's, I don't know if anybody else is dealing with that or has mm -hmm. ideas of how to sort of fix it. Well, I think the, 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 from a, a philosophical standpoint, the, the idea of kind of being the role model and, and sticking to your guns of definitely having everyone within the system always push back through. So even if, if that comment starts to splinter off or if they start a new email um, outside of, of the threaded discussion, I, I would say that, that bringing it back and for lack of a better, maybe Katie has a technical response, but forcing through that it, it, it's always originating from the system, I think creates that repeatable habit um, and, and breaking that habit, I think part of what Carl talked about it is part of the challenge. And, and yeah, I think the, this, um, whenever, whenever you get the email from them, there's a unique string that comes with it. So when they respond to you, um, just CC that unique string along with it and it'll go back into the thread. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 So as long as, as, as Rush said, as long as you make sure that the email, it's a long string, it says reply, I don't know, has a lot of numbers, right, right. Mm -hmm. central desktop. As long as you make sure that it's replying to that, then it will log back into the system. And I think for those, if the, the team members will say that, you know, maybe consistently don't tend to do that, I would recommend, from a training standpoint, I would recommend just probably doing a one-on-one -on -one training with them and making sure that they really understand how to use it. And one thing that we'll recommend, I think, long-term down in implementation sometimes is if you're still struggling a lot with just one or two individuals, and you know most of the team are on the system, but one or two individuals aren't, there's also a, a training technique called zero options approach, um, where the idea is that you literally, if, if it's not in social bridge, that's not where you interact with it. So it's a little bit more harsh of a, sh a training technique. I, I typically will recommend long-term down the line, maybe not at first, but the idea is interact in the system and that's kind of the expected behavior to get into the system. I have one other suggestion yeah. on that. I've seen sure. our PMs um, just within uh, Exchange create a rule that any time an email comes in from one of their clients, it automatically forwards with the string back into the mm -hmm. That's right. So it, it just basically adds whatever communication string back into it. Yeah, back in the day, uh, when we wanted to feed back conversations back into Salesforce. So we're just using the same thing. Yeah, that's a good idea. Anything else? Well, thank you for that input. I think that's, that's great advice. Yeah. Perfect. Well, if you have any other questions, feel free to approach us, whether it's after the session or in the hall. We'd be happy to answer for them. And with that, our contact information is also right there. So feel free to reach out to us through email or phone if you want to write that. Thank you so much.